Hello, and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. It's often said that children say the darndest things, but some of the things they say can be very revealing and a little scary, depending on your standpoint. Tonight, I will present tales of children who seem to recall past lives and pre-birth memories, and some of their parents were really thrown for a loop and a little creeped out. Remember to visit me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new content. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. I don't know if this is a story about reincarnation or just the connection between our world and the spirit world, but here is a story of the undeniable connection between my son and my grandfather. My grandfather was six foot seven inches tall, just a massive man. When he was young, he was denied entry into the Air Force because he was too large to fit in the cockpit of a plane so he ended up working on oil rigs for a living. Even though he was rather reclusive and didn't share much about his past with us, babies and kids always loved him. They treated him like a big jungle gym for the most part, climbing all over him. When I was 27 and pregnant with my first child, my granddad was insanely excited, and he told me he knew it would be a boy and that he would grow up to play basketball for Kansas, his alma mater. He talked about it every time we spoke. But when I was eight months into my pregnancy, my granddad had a stroke and he passed away suddenly. Two years later, when my son began talking, at some point he began talking about the farm where he was always so hot and it was dusty. He also had night terrors and he would wake up hollering about things that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Mostly he would say unintelligible things, but once in a while you'd catch words like dust storm and crop, really random things. When he was about four, he woke up from a night terror, crying and saying something about being tied to a tractor. One day, he came across an old family album that my mother had sent us in the mail and he turned to a picture of a child on a farm. He stared at it for a long time, and he got very quiet. He finally said very quietly, Papa Dick doesn't miss that place. It was bad. I was stunned. I took the picture out of the album and I read the back, and it was indeed a photo of my grandfather as a child. I had never even seen the picture before, and I had no idea that my son even knew my granddad's name. We never spoke about him. When my son started preschool, he would tell stories to the class about growing up on a farm with his brother. We lived in Colorado in a small apartment at the time. His teacher actually asked me about it, and she said he had such a vivid imagination. It got weird enough that we actually talked to a family counselor about it, but of course they had no idea what to say or how to help, other than to recommend a child psychologist. I finally broke down and spoke to my mom and grandma about it, and I laid it all out there. My mom was shocked, but my grandma went very quiet. Then she got up and went to get an old photo album that I had never seen before, and she started to tell me about my grandfather's parents. She said his mother, Catherine, was mean as a snake, and his father was a farmer. She said my grandfather told her, as punishment one time, when he was eight or nine years old, he was tied to the combine tractor. His hands were bound tight to the steering wheel with rope. Also, as a child, he was forced to work all day and into the night in the Kansas heat, harvesting fields, and they wouldn't give him any water all day. I didn't know what to do with that information then, and now that my son is nine, I still don't. By the time he entered kindergarten, my son stopped having night terrors, and he stopped talking about the farm 
and my granddad. It all just faded away. I don't know if there's some sort of bond between my grandfather and my son that formed because they were both so close to the spirit world when one died and the other was born, or if my son has a psychic link to the past through my grandfather. Whatever it was, it changed my ideas about spirituality and the afterlife forever. Ever since my son was old enough to talk, he would refer to his other mom and dad. His dad and I are married and there are no step-parents. He always told us that these other parents lived in a certain city about an hour and a half away from our town. And he remembered that they lived in a blue house. It's all very matter of fact when he talks about it. I've gotten more curious about it lately and I've asked him if he has any siblings or anything like that. But there are times when I'll ask him something and he'll just say that he doesn't remember. He often starts sentences by saying, When God made me small again. Does anyone have any experience with this? What can I do to try to find out more? I think it would be amazing to see if this is really true and to look for this other family to see if they exist. My son is very down to earth and he's not much of a storyteller. But I suppose it could be that. Opinions, anyone? My daughter did something very similar when she was two or three years old. She started talking about her other father, Colin, who had died in a fire. I wasn't a believer in reincarnation, so I didn't even imagine that it might be an actual memory at first. I thought it was just her imagination, or maybe something she'd seen on TV. But like you mentioned with your son, she was very matter-of-fact about it all. And the knowledge about the events that she was describing was well beyond her years. I quizzed my family members about it to see if she had watched anything on TV or overheard some people telling stories that might have triggered it but we couldn't think of anything that seemed likely. She wasn't exposed to much that wasn't kid-friendly at that age. She would just spontaneously mention these memories, often speaking of her other father and someone named Grandma Lottie. I thought it was eerie because these names she mentioned were old-fashioned and nobody we knew had those names. One day she told me that I was there too, but that I wasn't her mother that time. I was in denial that these might be memories of another life because it scared me. I just thought that kind of thing was BS that people made up. That is, until one day when she started talking about when I was in your stomach and she recounted something that happened when I was pregnant with her that she couldn't possibly have known. That comment literally sent chills through my body. I later stumbled upon some authors who wrote about children and past life memories, and I discovered that there are children out there who at a very young age seem to recall memories of an earlier life. My daughter eventually stopped talking about these things, and by age six or so, she no longer even had any memories left, or even any memory of talking about them in the first place. She's a young woman now, and she acts like I'm the crazy one when I bring it up. In the books that I read, it all seems to indicate that a person can have some memories of previous lives, and they seem to come to very young children. But just like our memories of our early childhood years fade with time, these memories of past lives fade as well as the children grow older. My only regret is that I didn't ask more questions and that I didn't write down the things that my daughter said at the time. I didn't know what it meant, and I was scared. So I just listened and let it go. Since then, I've tried to research it online, but I don't have any of the last names, places, dates, or anything to help me. Just a few first names and her story of this deadly fire. 
I'll always wonder about it though. As a small child, I freaked my mother out too with similar statements. The worst for her though was when I woke up from a nightmare one night, stared up at her and said, I don't want you. I want my real mommy. I don't specifically recall the things that I said or remembered as a child, but I was always 100% convinced in reincarnation and started to have past life regressions. I wish my mom had asked me questions and documented it. It would be really interesting to see if the things I said as a kid aligned with my later regressions. When I was a child, I had memories of a life that I had lived before. And apparently, I used to tell my mother about them. A lot. I have an innate fear of fire, and I would make sure that I was far away from the kitchen whenever my mom was cooking because I was so afraid of the flames, and I would get all jumpy if I heard a match being lit. My mother also told me that I would have nightmares about being burned alive. She said I used to tell her that I remembered being set on fire in a field. And when my mother asked me one day why I talked about being on fire so much, I told her, Before I was the person I am now, I was married and a mommy like you. But they set me on fire because a lady lied to them and they took me away. She lied because she wanted my husband. In that past life, I was a white woman. And it was a long time ago, like the late 1500s. I had blonde hair, blue eyes, and was married with children. We were poor and we lived in a small village in England, but I don't recall which one. But I do remember that some men came to take me away to put me in jail. And I kept insisting to them that I did nothing wrong. Then, all I remember is being set on fire. I've been having obsessive thoughts about being beheaded by sword for a crime that I didn't commit. I can't remember it with nearly as much detail as what you're describing, but I know it happened to me. I live in the U.S. and I've never been overseas in this life, but I know in a past life I was a woman of society somewhere in the U.K. and I was beheaded. Something was done with my head afterwards to humiliate me in death as well. I'm looking into getting a past life regression therapy so that I can deal with this and move on. It's not something I like to think about, but these thoughts and emotions surrounding it just won't leave me alone. This is the story of my first memory, and I know it's hard to believe. I remember watching my life happening in front of my eyes, but it was like it was on fast forward. I had this feeling that I was not in control, and I was not watching through my eyes, but at a distance away from my body. Then, all of a sudden, it felt like I was sucked into my physical body. There was a whoosh feeling. And then boom, my life was set in place and I was finally able to control my movements. I very specifically remember thinking to myself, oh, I can move now. If I had to guess, I would say I was about three years old when this happened. I've told this story to multiple people and nobody else seems to have a memory about anything like this happening to them. Maybe I'm just remembering the moment of being born, but I was just wondering if anyone has heard about this or can tell me what it was. I 
had that same experience. The fast forward feeling didn't happen to me, but I do remember that sensation of nothingness. Kind of like when you stand up too fast and you get that head rush and go temporarily blind. Then my very next memory was of playing hide and seek with my friends before preschool. I remember pausing like, huh, that was weird. What am I doing here? So yeah, it's like you say, around the age of three, it was like my soul was put into my body and that is where my memories began. That is exactly what happened to me. I told a few people about that exact thing and they don't get it. I think it lasted for me up until I was around 12 years old though. I don't remember ever physically having control over my body prior to that. I always felt like I was watching myself go through life as a bystander. I couldn't see through my own eyes. It was like I was on the outside looking in. My first memory is a little different. I have a very strong and persistent memory of being a middle-aged man in a large city. I couldn't tell you which one though. I recall it being dark outside and I got stabbed by somebody several times and I was left for dead beside a dumpster. From the clothes, I'd estimate the time period was in the 1970s. Then, my first memory in this body started at the age of three. Okay, I'm mostly just spitballing here, but here's my take on the situation. In Buddhism, there's a concept of a storehouse of consciousness. It stores memories of things like past actions and entire past lives. From my understanding, the seeds of past lives manifest into the consciousness of the present life. It's the foundation of all consciousness and it contains impressions of all of your past actions. These impressions form the basis of our personalities as well and all of the other traits that you associate with yourself. Maybe your consciousness arrived in your body after you were already born and then you had to play catch up so it perceived those years previous as history in Fast Forward. I know it sounds weird, but hey, isn't all of this? I remember having the same dream over and over again as a small child of being inside a huge void of endless darkness, then coming out from the void to enter this life. My first memory from this life is as a baby, lying in my crib, looking up at the mobile hanging above it and having adult thoughts, like I was analyzing the situation and thinking about it from a logical standpoint. Yet, I was a baby. I just remember thinking to myself, I'm lying here looking up at this object above me. What is it? In those words, and I remember wondering, where am I? I also had a ton of out-of-body experiences as a small child. People claim their physical bodies in different ways and at different times. Some choose to become enfleshed in the womb, some at birth, some after a few days of being born, and some never claim it. They wind up letting the body die. It's not an easy task mentally or physically to take possession of your new body from what I've heard, though some people do find it easier than others. The longer you live on the other side, the harder it is to join this world because you're used to how things work on the other side. 
I have a story like that myself. I remember being high above the earth, and I could see the whole world below me. Just before being born, I chose the sex I wanted to be. I remember thinking, women have a more gentle side, but men are stronger, so I chose a male. After that, I was born. I learned just prior to birth that we design our own lives for spiritual advancement, and then we're born. I have another story, too. My grandma was my spirit guide for a time, and then eventually she became reborn. One night, she invited me into her new mother's womb. I could see what her mother was seeing. There was a massive amount of love surrounding her. Her mom was standing in what would become the baby's room. She was having twins and so happy to be starting a new family. So yes, babies can see, feel, hear, and experience everything that their mom does in utero. At the age of three, our daughter turned to her dad and I and said, I'm so glad I chose you for my mommy and daddy. That other couple that was chosen for me didn't look like much fun. Yeah, we're pretty cool parents. We'd like to think so anyway. I love that people are remembering these things, since I was mostly invalidated when I spoke about it as a child. That's okay though, it didn't change my mind because I knew what I experienced was real. My first memory was of being held by my mom, and I was so thrilled to be with her again. I actually remember a few past lives with my mother and other family members, as we seemed to be reincarnated together as soul groups. But one incarnation really stands out most in my memory. It was maybe the early 1800s in what looks like England. I was a young woman and was arranged to be married to somebody that I didn't know. I lived with my family in a manor home, and our maid in that lifetime was my maternal grandmother in my present life. And my grandmother in that life was my mother in this life. Also, my mother in that life was my brother Kurt in this life. I know this because, as a child, I could tell who each person was by their vibration. Also, in my memories, their faces would flash just slightly to what they looked like in this life, so there was no mistaking who they were now as opposed to then. It was amazing to see that I was with my family again in this present life. I believe for their first few years, children have their head in heaven and their feet on earth. That's why they can tap into the spirit world and remember things that we lose as we grow older. I'm an 18-year-old female living in Europe. Ever since I can remember, I've believed in reincarnation and anything related to it. I've also been fascinated by European history in the 18th or 19th centuries, especially anything to do with the aristocracy back then. Whenever people discuss the revolution in France or Russia, I would get extremely upset and I would always take the side of the nobles and come to their defense. If the subject would come up about how the nobles were beheaded or killed, sometimes I'd get so upset I'd start to cry, and I am really not the kind of person that would cry over something like this, honestly. It just feels like I have some kind of connection with them. I'm fascinated by the life of the European nobles from this time, but I can't really say what the reason is behind my obsession. But I wanted to figure it out. So a few months ago, I tried to do a past life regression, and I remembered something. Just a flash of consciousness that only lasted for a few seconds. But those few seconds still haunt me today. And they are the reason I decided to make this post, to hopefully get some answers. In this past life, I was male and poor, 
but not poor like a beggar. More like I had everything, and then it was unfairly taken away. I was sitting in a small dark room, and I was writing letters like a maniac. And there was this woman who was standing behind me, shouting my name and telling me to stop writing. I can't remember the language that was used or the name that she used to call me by. I just recall the strong emotions I felt in that moment. It was crazy, like a huge wave crashing down on me. It felt like my heart stopped beating for a second because it was so intense. It's really hard to describe, but sometimes when something really terrible happens to you, it feels similar to that. There was just so much energy and emotion in that moment, but that's really all I can recall. I want to remember it, but it's like the memory is there, but I just don't have full access to it yet. It's especially troublesome to me because of this woman. I do remember her name. It was Lizbeth and it's the only detail I recall clearly. In that incarnation, I know that I really loved her. I wanted to meet her again, but somehow I have the feeling that was impossible to do at that time. I have many friends in this lifetime, and some of them feel very familiar, like maybe we're from the same soul group. But there's no trace of this woman, Lizbeth, and it's really upsetting to me for some reason. Another thing that sticks in my mind is the date 1721. I feel like something very special happened that year pertaining to this incarnation. Maybe my own birth, I don't know. I just wanted to share this experience and get some opinions here. So feel free to give me your opinions. Here's my opinion on past lives and reincarnation. Everything is made up of energy, and by definition, energy is dynamic and active. Also, as far as we know, energy can never die. It just changes form. So it kind of stands to reason that reincarnation would have to happen. Globs of energy come together to interact with each other and affect other globs of energy, impacting them breaking them apart, creating new globs over and over. And there's intelligent energy. This seems obvious since human beings were able to form at all. Intelligent energy must move, change, grow, and evolve. It's a never-ending cause and effect universe, full of moving parts that's intelligent enough to direct this energy in ways that help grow and evolve. That was a total stream of consciousness thing that I just came up with there. Sorry if it sounded crazy. That explanation didn't sound crazy to me at all. In fact, it made as clear and concise an argument for reincarnation that I've ever heard. I still don't know exactly where I stand on the subject, but I do believe there is far more to this world that we don't know than we do. I find the subject fascinating, and I hope you did too, and that you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, and tell me why in the comments below. I do listen to your feedback. Don't think I don't. If you'd like to explore more topics like this, plus ghost and creepy people stories, subscribe and check out the playlist linked at the end of the video. As always, thank you so much for being here and for listening. It's such a pleasure to entertain you every week. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends.